could hardly hear it though, that message was muffled. Oh, I left that voice man? Yeah. He's nice, he's like a nice guy. Lord God the Father, just ask you to take this time, Lord, to exalt and to put Jesus Christ ahead of all things. Lord God, as we study into the Gospel of John, Lord, we're just trying to fill our hearts with what is righteous and throw out what is unrighteous. May you approve, may you be pleased. Lord, may the rapture happen. Lord, the angel, Lord, I pray, hopefully, he's on his way. And Lord, for Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. All right. John chapter 20. No, 1. Long way to 20. You missed last week. No. That was your last week, remember? We're picking on you. Oh. John chapter 1, verse 12. The thing is, like, like I said, I'm in no hurry to finish the book. Uh... We're going to take verse by verse. I don't know what sentence structure by sentence structure. I mean, if we have to go to the comma, semicolon, or a period, we'll break down as it is, word by word if we have to. Uh, in 12 verses, look at all what we've talked about. If I would just say, okay, let's do chapter by chapter, look, look, look at the material we're missing. And the thing is, you say, well, why do we have to go through all these scriptures? Why are we looking at them? Because I want you to look where I'm looking so you can't say you're mis uh, misapplying, misapplicating scriptures. I'm just not going to throw, okay, here's this verse, say it. I want you to read it. Amen. And then I want you to practice turning the pages in the Bible. No better practice than, okay, let's go over the Bible, find the books and learn. So, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Now again, that many is not all. This theology, this teaching that Jesus Christ died for all men. John 3.16 particular familiar passage. John 3.16 And we got a bunch of scripture to run on this. But John 3.16. And to throw in there, which it's, it's a rabbit trail, but it does have to. The, the, the saying that Jesus Christ hates the sin and loves the sinner is wrong. Jesus Christ will, I mean, God will never love anybody who's turned their back on Jesus. That's impossible. So John 3.16. For God so loved the world. There it is. Alright? That's everybody and everybody. Before salvation. That He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever, whosoever, anybody, everybody that will. That doesn't say all. Whosoever comes. Whosoever will do. That's any sex, any race, any creed, anybody. And he ate, whosoever believeth in him, we saw that in John 1, should not perish but have everlasting life. So, right. believing on Jesus Christ, not all will do that. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. God didn't send Jesus Christ, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. Not hell, does everybody go to hell? That's not what God sent Jesus for. The first advent. He came as the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. He came as a Savior. The second advent, he'll say, you'll go to hell, you'll go to hell, you'll go to hell, you'll go to hell. You're on my side. It's dividing the sheep from the goats. But the first, but the first, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Amen. When a man has not believed on Jesus Christ, and more so when he's heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, he's already in hell. As much as the Bible says we are seated in heavenly places by Jesus Christ, a man that has not believed on Jesus is already in hell. His soul just hasn't caught up. It's condemned already. But, oh, wait. 
He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is, con is condemned already, because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Salvation rests upon Jesus and Jesus alone. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. Now, this is the verses we want about many. Jesus Christ came into the world. We saw that light, John 1. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds be reproved. That doesn't sound like to me that everybody's going to go to heaven one day. That sounds like there are some people out there who reject God in his light. That sounds like some people are angry with God. But he that doeth truth, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, Amen. cometh to the light, John chapter 1, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought of God. Verse 36. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. That's two periods on top of each other. That's not the end of the sentence. If that was a period right there to end the sentence, end the verse, okay, everybody's going to heaven. Problem is, we got a colon. And conjunction we got one that believes, and he that believeth not. We got the unbeliever. There are believers, and there are unbelievers. Not all are going to go to heaven. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God abide in bond in. So today, many is not all. And there is a foolish teaching that once the great judgment is over, God will punish our behinds or whatever he does and he lets us all go through into heaven. Except people who do this crime against us. I mean, you can't do this unless you pay us and then you can be absolved from what you do and then you can get to go into our paradise. That's ridiculous. And that's called oh boy, uh, indulgence. You pay to do sin. You go to church now on Friday, receive the Mass, and then you can party all weekend long and show back up Monday, take the Mass over again, and go into the little phone booth, conventional booth, whatever you want kind of book, and confess your sins to the man, probably writing them down. And make, hey, you know what? Confession today? That's a, maybe they got cameras in there. I can tell you, no, I can tell you, Bible believing churches that have cameras watching you. In, in, the his, in history, they used confession against people. Confession was used. In that church. Uh, really? Yeah. The, the to, Nazis. To, to, um, to what, what is it called? Bribe them into yep. staying in the church. And yep. Romans chapter 6. We'll tell, that, we'll tell somebody that you did that. Romans chapter 6. Mm. Really? Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 6, verse 9. That was, that was in the past. Oh, you got cameras if in. If it was going on then, you know it's still going on now. Oh. Romans six nine. You thought I was going to say ten now. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, hey, I got. We had a guy Saturday quote to us John fourteen six. Right out of the crowd, out loud, I'm like oh. Really? So they're hearing. Romans 6, 9. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, remember we needed to know the resurrection for salvation, dieth no more, death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Okay, there's our salvation. It's in Christ the resurrection. Christ die for our souls. Christ died for our hope. He's the blessed hope. There's no other means. There's no other way as Jesus said, his own self. Hebrews 7 24. So the salvation we're looking at now, many 
the many have to believe what we are studying, again, about Jesus and his salvation. Or you're the way of the wickedness. You've got a religion. You've got a thing. You don't have the way. So Hebrews 7.24. But this man, Jesus, verse 22. But this man, because he continueth ever, forever lives, has an unchangeable priesthood. The priests are not going to die. you got one priest, the high priest, forever, Jesus Christ. You don't need to make up new rules, new legislation, new statutes, new commandments. Christ. Verse 25, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. That's the mediator. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such a high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, made higher than the heaven, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins. The high priest had to make an atonement that one day of the year. He had to go to the most holy place first for himself, because he's a sinner. And then he went in there for the people, because they're sinners. But Jesus Christ, once he made an offering on Calvary's cross for our sins, he sat down the right hand of the Father, and there is no more death. There is no more dying. There is no more resurrection. It is finished in the finished work upon Calvary. So why are religious people going around, I mentioned this area, why are they going around with Jesus still nailed to the cross? Why has the church got an emblem of the nail of Jesus to the cross? That's done with. That's finished. That's over. On the cross, he cried, it is finished. So, Jesus Christ has become our high priest. Not only did he enter... See, when the high priest went in, no one else was supposed to go with him. And that you will hear that they tied a rope to his feet. If they did, he would have been slaughtered right there. Because there's no mention of a rope. You went in that most holy place as God prescribed, not according to tradition. And when Jesus Christ entered that veil and entered his blood upon the mercy seat of God, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, he didn't close that veil back up. He rent it. He said, rip. And that partition, the Bible speaks, but hey, I can go in past the table of the bread. I can pass the candlestick with the with the holy olive oil or oil olive. I'm trying, I'm trying to say what the Bible says. It's hard, but you've been trained. And I can pass through that incense altar of the great smell that God enjoys of prayer. And I can poke not only my head, I can poke my body at the mercy seat of God and say, God, I'm here by the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't go back and kill Jesus every week. I don't go back and kill Jesus every month. I don't go back and kill Jesus on Easter and Christmas. He suffered and died once. Now there are people out there who believe that Jesus dies weekly. Jesus dies on holidays. You're the many that are not going to be saved. You don't have the right Christ. And Hebrews 9.24 Amazing how Satan opposes the Word of God. Do you believe in Satan? Do you believe in the devils of hell? Here they are right now. It's some kind of noise, always. 924. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. All right. We don't have a physical temple. We don't have a physical tabernacle. Matter of fact, the Jewish tabernacle is gone. Which are figures of the true. So when Moses built that tabernacle, when that, te that temple was built, that pattern God gave Moses and gave David was the pattern of heaven. 
study the tabernacle. Because the tabernacle is laid out to what heaven's going to be laid out. And many people who do not read the Old Testament, they're going to get to heaven. They're not going to know their way around. Because when you read the great book of Revelation, the ark is there. The temple is there. The doors have been opened. And out of the incense altar are smoke. And the people are going to be going, what is all that? Besides the fact is, when Jesus does come for his bride of the rapture, many people are going to be shocked because he doesn't look like a Hollywood performer. They're not going to have no idea who he is. Now they're going to have no idea what heaven is. I can pretty much describe to you very minute what heaven's going to be by what the study of the Bible. When we, if we ever do get to Exodus, study through Exodus. So, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, at the throne of God to his right hand is Jesus for me. And when Satan comes up and says, do you see what style he's doing? That great evangelist of yours. Did you see the thought that he just had? God in his holiness turns and says, okay. And the son speaks up to his father. He's confessed that sin in my blood. There is no accusation anymore because you, according to the Bible, cannot remember it no more. Jesus Christ right now is at the right hand of God. He's not nailed to a cross. He is seated at the right hand of the Father praying and making intercessions and applying His blood to my life and my sins. Now, no other God can do that. No other God is that. But the God of Jesus Christ. Romans 3.23 Romans 3.23 I and this message is about receiving. This is what I have done as far as receiving. And when, like we dealt with, I think last week or the week before, when you some, ask somebody, have you received Christ as your Savior? And many people, oh, you don't say that. Well, you can, because it's in the Bible. We just read it. But you can't take them for face value, the answer, because a Catholic will take Jesus by eating him. That's not salvation. Now, we're going to look at how to receive Christ. And if this is the answer you get, you're fine. That person's fine. Romans 3.23. Oh, I'm in two. I think it's one chapter off and make really like, what is that? For all have sinned. Now, do you believe that? I can show you a colored man right now, yay tall, that does not believe that. And dealt harshly with me about that. And turned around and told me, because I admit to sins, I am not saved and never will be saved. That man is not going to heaven. Okay? I just touched, what? One, two, three, four, four words. And there are people who believe they have not sinned. Well, you're not going to heaven. There's a church, holiness people. They don't believe they sin. And when you do point out their sin, they will have an alibi or an excuse for their sin. That's not really what, particularly what the Bible is speaking about. When you speak to people about their sin, oh, the Bible is totally, absolutely against idolatry. Their age to worship. What are you doing? All right, for all have sinned, that's me, even after salvation. Just because I'm saved doesn't make me perfect. I'm not perfect until I'm lying dead in the grave or I've been raptured. And I'm not perfect until after the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. I don't know at that point we get the new body. I don't know. Maybe at the rapture. But I'm still guilty of sin. For all sin and come short of the glory of God. 
So we fall into a gap. All human beings fall into a gap. Romans 5.12. And this would be, this verse about me also would be the proof text, one of the many of the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Why a man could not conceive to make the Messiah. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered the world. We know that man is Adam. So, Jesus Christ could not have been born by physical man of man because you can trace the genealogy to Adam. Now you can trace the genealogy back to Adam in Luke chapter 2. But there's a problem. That genealogy is of a woman named Mary, the virgin birth. You can trace the genealogy of the adopted father of Joseph of the kingly line of Judah. But Ju I mean Joseph had nothing to do with Mary. For that pregnancy and that birth. He adopted Jesus. Verse number 12 again. Wherefore as by one man sin entered the world. I am born of a man. Which is 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 born of Noah. Which is born of Adam. I sin by the nature of my family. All have sinned. Death by sin. So death passed on to... I mean, and death by sin. The wages of sin is death. There it is. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Again, we met a man that stood in my face and told me he's never going to die. If you're never going to die, you are not a sinner. You're going to die. You are a sinner. That's many who are not going to go to heaven. Because you can't get no further with somebody who says, oh, I've never sinned. That's one of the, that, that, the processes process that we looked at for a man to believe and be saved. He's got to admit he's a sinner. Eight, Romans 8.32 And with many... Again, we're looking at if you do not believe what we're reading today, you're not going to heaven. Many will believe what I what we are studying. They will go to heaven. There are, remember what John said, there are believers and there are unbelievers. And if somebody comes up to you, you say, Well, hi, have you ever received Christ as your Savior? Oh yeah. Can you tell me your testimony? If it follows what we're teaching right now today, mark them as saved. If they go beyond what we've spoken about, as Tracy has seen people dealing with me, she's even dealt with people, you have the rights to say, I don't think you're saved, and you have the rights to start dealing with them as a sinner, and you can turn around and have them say, judge not least ye judge. The Bible says in Corinthians, I can judge things, and I'm looking at you, not you. I'm looking at the things you're doing. I'm looking at the testimony you just gave me. Farce. I'm not judging. You may be saved, but man, your conduct don't show it. Mm -hmm. And there'll be people who come up to you, and we had how many times? Oh, I go to church. I went to church. I did this in church. That's not the answer. I remember when I was baptized. That's not the answer. I, I'm, a good I'm a good person. That's not the answer. That's right. And then you throw, you won't get them angry. The Bible says there is none that do it good. Now you made a mad. So now you just say, hey, now anger is a sin. The Bible says be angry and sin not. You are sinning against a man who's trying to tell you the way of testimony. There's nothing wrong with getting angry. The Bible says be angry. I am angry at this world. I am angry at religion, but if I go in the church and start knocking over their idols and start killing priests and all, then that's sin. You know? So Romans 8, 32, so what we're refreshing on what salvation is, and we're refreshing on 
the person we're dealing with. We, do we have this testimony? 832. He that spared not his own son, capital S, but delivered him up for us all. Now, is that not a monkey wrench into what we've just been teaching? All. And then God so loved the world. Wait a minute, that's a monkey wrench. You, you just contradicted yourself. You said many are going, but not all. And now it just says, uh, again, He spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all. What's the monkey wrench? Everybody Christ died for. Everybody that blood was shed for everybody. Christ went into hell and deposited sins for everybody. Now holding your place there, let's go back to John 1, verse 12. Now let's look at, but as many as received Him. There are people who have not received Him. And yet the atonement is there. Why do you preach on the street? Because Christ died for them all. That's right. Go in all the world and preach the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to Scripture and was buried and rose again the third day according to Scripture. That is for everybody that's born of a woman. Now we had a cop come up tonight. Where's your crowds? There's no promise of a crowd. I preach the gospel, but there is no guarantee all of them will get saved. There will be people who are believed, John 3.36, and there are people who will not believe, but yet Christ died for them all. They refused it. And their refusal will not get them to heaven. And they will stand before God as you witness to Him, as you give them a gospel track, as you leave a gospel track, as you, whatever you can to tell them about their lost condition. They will stand before God and they will accuse God of being unfair, unrighteous, and... Uh, I never knew. My son died for you. Uh, I never knew that. Bring up the gospel tracks. Bring up the street preacher. Bring up the Christmas carols. Bring up the hymn. Bring up the time that you went to churches because you wanted that girl. Uh, or your mom forced you. Whatever the testimony is. And Jesus Christ is the one who's going to be judging the great white throne. I died for you. Amen. And the double damnation is, I went to hell for you. And deposited, now you go pay for your own sins. But you don't have to. The account has been paid. All you got to do is sign that check that, yeah, I want Jesus to pay for my account. He died for all. Imagine all the people that go the broad way that leads to destruction, and they yet do not have to. I think that's going to be the tears at the great white throne judgment of our family. Not that we witness to them. They say, it's the fact is, you are going somewhere where you need not go, you fool. It's not that you called me an idiot and talked about me. Not No, it's what you just rejected. Because there it is. It's all. It's not a contradiction of a many and a contradiction of all. No, everybody. God's not willing that any should perish. God doesn't throw you into hell. You throw yourself. Remember John 3? They're condemned already. Only what is the way to remove that condemnation? Believe. John 1, 12. Uh, Romans 10, 12. These I try to put in the order. This one I was able to put in biblical order. John, I mean, Romans 10, 12. I kept saying first John, now I keep saying John. John 10, 12. I thought you said Romans. Romans. See, yeah, John I again. Romans 10, 12. So, Many have to believe, not all. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Try telling that to the KKK, who are supposedly Christians. Yeah, right. And why burn the cross? Who say Jews and everybody else. But let's just look at the Jews. They're the people above all people. And they hate Jews. 
So there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. It would be great if all people got saved. If the, listen, you want to give me a heart attack and send me home to heaven early? You have everybody at that farmer's market step forth and get on their knees and say, we want to receive Christ. But then, no, it won't, because I will go over to Tracy and say, Tracy, wake me up, I'm dreaming. Tracy, I'm dreaming. Thank you. <laughs> I'm dreaming. You but you know, I've had that dream. I've had that dream where everybody stepped forth, left their vessel, stood right there. I don't know what they in that road is. But I was standing on their knees and received Christ as their Savior. That's been my dream. But it's a dream. Now you say, how many people have come forth and gotten saved? As far as we know, zero. But I don't know. I don't know who got saved in the past. I don't know who got saved in the present. I don't know who got saved in the future. But all those people, Christ died for. He told me, go in all the world. You, all those people that Christ died for, they cannot be without excuse. you got to go tell them. And if they don't become, they don't receive, that's their condemnation. Uh, verse 16 of chapter 10. Now this is an important verse with John 1.12. Everybody's going to heaven, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. How's that? Universal salvation is what it's called. Many of the religious doctrines, churches, teach, all will go to heaven. What about pedophiles? Well, maybe not. Wait a minute, you said all. What about Adolf Hitler? Well, I don't see the mean, wicked, vile people. What about the man that, that has pulled people out of your church for salvation and they're growing them? Well, not them, but they pulled people out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what? And if you, if you look at them, you study those people in their own theology, not all go to heaven. All right? How about this one? Ready? All go to heaven. Ready? Satan. Do you want him in heaven? He's already caused a replacement. So, listen. Do all go to heaven? Your answer would be to that question, Satan. If Adolf Hitler believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved, hey, he's going to heaven just as much as anybody. He probably apologized to all the Jews that got saved. I don't know. But would you want the one that caused all this mess when you say all? It's funny. Interesting. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. So if you can't remember what to say, if somebody comes, oh, oh go ahead, just remember it. Satan. I mean, he's in heaven right now, but he's going to get his butt kicked out for Revelation 12. 1 Corinthians 15. I'm over the second thing. 15.22. Not yet. Revelation 12. He's still going up there. Now, see, that's another thing, too. When we go absent from the body and present with the Lord, there are many Christians that don't realize what is heaven today. When you get to heaven before Revelation 12, I don't know how much your soul is going to know, but you will see Satan and you will see his angels. And you'll be surprised what he looks like. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. For as in Adam, there he is, all die. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. See, there's the opportunity for everybody. You see where they take the false doctrine? But they forgot John chapter 3. When they say all are going to heaven, yes, that opportunity is there. It's great. That'd be wonderful to pray for. Don't waste your prayers on that. Because all are not going. Pray for the few that you know and the people you're dealing with. But don't go be praying, oh Lord God, have every council member and every official in Daytona Beach get saved. That's a wasted prayer. Oh. If you're really concerned about them, march in their office, make an appointment, tell them about Jesus Christ, then you can pray for them. 
when Paul finished one of his letters, I forget how it is, I, I'm making this go. He says, I greet those, I think it's Caesar's house. Paul witnessed to the people in the palace. So, where were we? 22. Now let's go to 25. put all enemies under his feet. That's not everybody gets saved. That's a contradiction. All people are going to heaven. His enemies? That would be like what America is doing today. That's what America is doing. That's not what Jesus Christ is going to do. Anybody who's been an enemy of the gospel in this day and age, by not all are going to heaven. Second Corinthians five fourteen. Second Corinthians five fourteen. Now I've dealt with one man who never sinned. The theology of all will go to heaven. I haven't dealt with a person like that yet. So 2 Corinthians 5.14. People, you are witnessing Satan at work. 5.14. For the love of Christ. So we got the love of God. And now we have the love of Christ constraints us because we thus judge that if one died for all then we're all dead the application of Calvary is for everybody but not everybody's going to receive Christ Verse 15. That in that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. When we get to heaven, it ain't going to be like, hey, JD, just for me and all that. Because that'd be trouble, because I've been married twice. No, when we all get to heaven, it's going to be for Jesus Christ. Now, now listen now, listen now. If you can't stand the preaching and teaching of the, of the Bible as we do Saturday morning, you are not going to enjoy heaven. Now, you take my videos. I don't know, Tracy, I don't know she, how many times I mentioned Jesus Christ in the name of salvation. If you cannot stand the name of Jesus Christ when I preach 45 minutes, you are not going to stand what? Eternity? You're not going to stand eternity all for Jesus. And if you do not appreciate it, I said this Saturday too, I don't want you in my head. You're going to enjoy hell more better than you're going to enjoy hell. Because there is no Jesus in hell. There's no Jesus in hell. There's no righteousness in hell. You'll be with your own people. Without the Christian, without the Bible, and without Jesus. Now, do you believe everybody loves Jesus? But then again, can you say everybody's going to go to heaven? If they did, if God put everybody in heaven, let's say he did. You know how many gripes and complainers and people would not want to be there? Including Satan? There you go. There's a theology that all are not going. 
Repeat and repeat and over here. He didn't repeat over there. Galatians 3, 22. So we're all sinners. We can agree on that. But we can't. Tracy seen me deal with a man that said we're not. He's not a sinner. Holiness people, church of God, do not believe they're sinners. And their women will wear their dresses all the way down to their... But yeah, it's all the way down to their knee. And the Bible says, as far as that case, if a man looks upon a woman and lusts after his heart, you've already committed adultery. We're all sinners. We can't, we all can't agree on that. That's funny. And yet the Bible over and over and over. what we're reading now has concluded we're not even finished with the book we're in the middle of the New Testament has concluded and forgive me I keep losing my place all under sin that the promise of faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe all a sin but the promise to them John 1 12 that believe that's the truth people out there who believe they'll have another beer. That's their God. And there are people out there who believe, I believe I'll trust them. There are people out there, I believe I'll get the TV guide. And yet there are people out there, I believe I'll get the Bible. There are two classifications of people. You're saved or you're lost. That's it. God is holy. He says, be holy for I am holy. You can't be holy as a sinner. That's where Christ steps in with his righteousness. There are no Catholics and Baptists, agnostics, atheists in heaven. There are born again Christians washed by the blood of Jesus Christ alone. And that's what you're not, you're not going to be there. As well as much as your preacher, preacher it, or whoever teaches you, they're teaching you a lot. Hebrews 5 9. And this is a damnable condemnation message. Because if you were to think everybody's going to heaven, what would you do if someone came to you? telling you about Jesus and how to get saved. What's the standard answer, Louise? You already said it. I'm good. And they are in a way of saying, we're all going to heaven. Right? And what they're saying in, in, in the general reference to you, we're all going to go to heaven. That's what they're saying. And yet the Bible, the scriptures say otherwise. Hebrews 5, 9. Being made perfect. Now, if you read that to someone right now, they would say, it's me. Right? If you just read that verse, oh, that's me. He became the author of eternal salvation. Now, ah, who's that? <laughs> that's Jesus. Okay, Jesus is perfect. I am not. I will be perfect in at least New Jerusalem, guarantee. Guarantee I'll be perfect in New Jerusalem. Alright? Now watch. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. That's John 1.12. That's the many. Now, if I were to go knock this guy off this lawnmower, which I like to do in the flesh, <laughs> well, that would be a sin. I could be angry. And if I were to knock him off that lawnmower and say, would you like to believe Jesus Christ is your Savior? I guarantee I'd probably know what the answer would be. And it would not be the entrance into heaven. 
There are people who believe that Peter is standing at the pearly gate. There are 12 pearly gates. What are there, 12 Peters? Yeah. He was married. The Bible says there are 12 gates. It's got to be 12 Peters. Don't you, if, if you come up to the gate of Peter, why don't you just go around and go, go up to the, the gate of Paul or, or Benjamin. I forget what the gates are named for. They're named the So, conclusion is we're not going to see everybody. And that breaks my heart because they're our family. I know they're in hell today. No matter, and I got people mad at me for saying that. But they are. I, I guarantee 99.90 .90 better than ivory soap. I know they're in hell by their life. Now, they, that one, per, whatever that, they could have gotten saved. But their lives, that's hard. That's heartbreaking. Well, don't you want to memorize their their memorial of their life, don't you want R.I.P.? They're not. If they have not believed on Jesus. Get out of the happy grounds of putting rest in peace on tombs because they all don't go to heaven. And if you put R.I.P. on that grave and they are a Bible rejecter, you are lying. Repent of that sin. You see, we are a, a gallon of water being th thrown on the world's fire of oak of all. <laughs> There's holy water put it out. You're only saved by Jesus. Well, I don't care. Yeah. Who do you think you are? I guess I'm the minority. Because the Bible says the majority go into hell. Brawls the way that leads to destruction. Now Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9 again, being made perfect. You know we're going to be like Christ one day? Amen. What does that mean for us? Perfect. Okay? You take an unrepentant sinner who's never going to believe the Bible. Can they be made perfect when they hate the Bible, they hate Jesus, and they got some other kind of God? That's impossible. 2 Peter 3.9 2 Peter 3.9 Uh-oh. We're going to talk to the Pope. I guess there was two Peter. I guess there were two Peter Pope. Look, second Peter. Must have been his twin. You know how wicked that church is? Well, you turn to second Peter 3 9. You know, they have what they call relics. It's pieces of junk that they worship in each each church has their own piece of junk. There's one place they had the wing of Michael the Archangel. One church had the breast milk of Mary. Well, they had the church that had the, the head, the skull of John the Baptist. All right? They crossed the, the European continent to another church that had another skull of John the Baptist. And the people say, hey, listen, where we came from, we, they got the skull of John the Baptist. How can you have the skull of John? And this is a true story, by the way. This is not a story. This is true. And their identification was the fact that, well, you have the skull of John the Baptist, you adult. We have the skull of John the Baptist of the baby. That's religion. That's a true story. You can find that document. And people believed it and walked away and never questioned. Not all are going to heaven. 2 Peter 3 9. Wait a minute, what am I looking for? Yeah, 3 9. 2 Peter 3 9. We're going to keep you. I did. 2 Peter 3 9. This is not the Pope. This is the one that said, Ah, oh, you were with Jesus. I don't I, I don't know who he is. Hey, weren't you weren't you with Jesus? Blankety, blank, blank, blank! No! Get out of my face, girl. That's Jesus. That's him. Hey, Peter, isn't that Jesus on the beach? Oh, I gotta put my clothes on, I'm naked. Shit! Jesus, will you help my mother-in-law? She's sick. And Peter was rebuked by Paul for an error. So, all right, nine. Off Peter. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise of eternal life. As some men count slackness. Now, if I promise you something, I may not be able to perform. If I say, Louise, uh, next Wednesday we're going to study this in the Bible. 
And between now and then, I get in a car accident, end up in the hospital, or dead. Or we come here and this place is burnt down and it's raining and pouring and we have nowhere to meet. My promises are no good. That's why the marriage vows say to death do you part. Because you cannot promise any further. Especially if you've got a mixed, a mixed marriage of save and unsave. But what God promises will be. Now there are some promises people throw out there that make God a liar because God never said that. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth, which is not found, but only the King James Bible. But is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repent. What does God want of man? He wants them all to be saved. What's reality? They're not. So when you call God unfair, unrighteous. You are calling God a fall, a liar. Two more places. Ezekiel 3.19, Old Testament. Let's close with these two verses on the fact is, let's get rid of God as a meaning. Because He's not a meaning. Ezekiel 3.19 Not that I can't find Ezekiel, I can't. He's a sealed book, I can't open it. No, that's Daniel. All right, I opened the book that's sealed. Ezekiel 3.19. Yet, if thou warned the wicked, and he turned not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, for thou hast delivered thy soul. You go out there in any way that God's giving the ability to tell the lost man how to get saved. If he, if he does not adhere to you, the planter, or the waterer, and he does not get increased by God, you have done what you're supposed to do. But, they're the ones in there. They're not going to heaven. They're not going. And in 1821, Ezekiel 1821. There is righteous. That's what God wants to see. But with the man being a sinner, there is unrighteousness. But if the wicked will turn from his sins. Oh, look at that. There are churches, go ahead and keep sinning. You're a sodomite? We'll welcome you. They're not getting saved in that church. They're not getting saved in the Sodomite church. Say that right in front of the camera. What does the Bible say? But if the wicked will turn from the sins that he has committed, keep all my statutes, which that's the law, and do that which is lawful and right, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, that's today, he shall surely live, he shall not die, eternal life. John said, he that has the Son, capital S, has eternal life. That's the part they're going to heaven. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. John 3.36 That is the one that's not going to heaven. And it's so funny because guess what? I know we use him as an example all the time. But let's say Adolf Hitler did get saved. Let's say, I don't know. He would be going to heaven. Do you know how many priests and pastors and pastorettes who have not done the way of God will go off into eternity preaching that all go to heaven? Imagine, your, imagine preaching to your congregation we're all saved, we're all going to heaven, God loves, God hates the sin but loves the sinner. Going off into eternity ended up with your congregation in hell believing that crap. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes for all eternity because I have a feeling that you're going to be pointing fingers at you. You're going to be blamed. Why'd you lead us here? Why are we here on that doctrine? 
I guarantee those will come up in hell. The person that stopped you from believing in Jesus Christ, I guarantee they will be tortured mm -hmm. in hell by the person that they stopped. I guarantee. I guarantee. That would be one of the torments. Imagine somebody coming up to you, you got a wound, they just rub salt or iodine in it. Hell has different degrees. It does. And Lord God, I thank you that we have the eternal salvation, the eternal hope, the blessed hope. And Lord, it's a sad fact that there will be people in hell and going off to the lake of fire. And Lord, the only way we can stop them, we can't save them. We can just preach the gospel. Lord, whether by preaching, giving a book, giving a gospel track, giving a scripture, giving an email, a letter, a telephone call. Lord, whatever it is, we lined up with the scriptures. But Lord, we must rest it that there will be people we know that will not believe. We're not going to get all the results that you want at the farmer's market. We're not going to get all the results at the flea market or anywhere you send us. Lord, it would be great if we were to preach the next Daytona 500, if we were to tarry. And all those people from the preaching and the gospel church would stand up and route for Jesus. But he would have to pinch me and wake me up. And for Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Amen.